The word property valuation is used and heard in so much context. Buyers are often looking to buy something below valuation, while sellers are always looking to sell above valuation. Now actually, valuation is much more than just buying and selling prices. It is actually used and made reference to much more often than many knows it to be. What exactly is valuation? How is valuation derived? And exactly what impact does valuation have on prices? This is what we are attempting to find out today. Property valuation is a systematic methodology to derive at fair open market value. Now, fair open market value is defined as transactions that takes place between parties that are willing at arm's length transaction, where both parties will come together to try to negotiate to the best efforts to derive at a mutually agreeable price. As defined in the international valuation standards, the estimated amount for which a property should exchange on the valuation date between a willing buyer and a willing seller in an arm's length transaction after proper marketing and where the parties had each acted knowledgeably, prudently and without compulsion. This means it does not include transfers of property between family members or any other personal circumstances where a person may be inclined to pay more or less. The most common valuation method is known as the comparison method, where we try to derive at fair value of our subject property by making reference to comparable similar properties. Data from these comparable properties should be obtained from credible sources such as URA or HDB and are adjusted accordingly to account for the differences between the comparable data and our subject property. For example, if our subject property is located on level 20 and the comparable property that has been recently transacted is located at level 2, the data has to be adjusted accordingly to reflect the differences between the subject property and this transacted comparable property. Property valuation is often said to be both an art and science. Often, how much to adjust for the particular difference is up to the experience and discretion of the valuers doing the valuation. This valuation method is the most commonly used for properties which are frequently transacted and has abundant comparable data, such as residential units in HDB, condominiums or even landed properties. The common commercial office towers and even typical industrial buildings. An abundance of transaction data is pertinent to the accuracy of this method because if we have larger clusters of data, we will be able to suss out any discrepancies such as extreme high or low transactions, which may be an indication of transactions not at arm's length. For special types of property, where there are unlikely any meaningful available comparable data for us to use, valuers may then choose to use other methodologies such as the cost approach or the income method. The cost method is based on the assumption that the price a purchaser is willing to pay for a property is equal to the cost of building a similar property from scratch. Such valuation method is commonly used to derive at values of specialized property with little transactions and where it generates little or no income, such as libraries or schools. In a nutshell, we attempt to value the property by including the value of land and the cost of improvements like construction after deducting off the cost of depreciation. The income method is most commonly used for hotels and theatres. This method attempts to derive at value using the income generated from the property divided by capitalization rates. 
The net operating income is simply the annual income generated after taking into account all income collected from its operations and subtracting all expenses incurred from operations. The capitalization rate can also be defined as the rate of return on a property. A simple way to decide on a capitalization rate is to use the data of comparable properties. For example, when you want to value a shop house, the investor looks at the recent selling price of similar property and the average capitalization rate generated. Buyers and sellers often make decisions on what price to buy and what price to sell based on valuation, whether it is conscious or not. Constantly, we will always look at past transaction data to determine for ourselves what would deem to be a likely fair open market value. Now with that, buyers, like I said, will always be looking to buy under value and sellers will always want to sell over valuation. This results in both parties trying their best efforts to actually negotiate uh, to derive at a mutually agreeable price that is deemed as fair to all. This in a nutshell is known as fair open market value. If a seller sells below valuation and the sales proceeds are insufficient to discharge bank loan or the amount of CPF funds he had utilized from his own CPF, the sellers will need to pay these shortfalls in cash. In Singapore, if you take a mortgage loan from the banks, the maximum loan-to-value ratio will be 75%. And if you take a mortgage loan from HDB, the maximum loan-to-value ratio is 90%. Additionally, majority of Singaporeans will utilize their CPF monies to finance part of the property purchase. They will be able to use up to 100 or 120% depending on individual circumstances to finance the property purchase. These percentages are based on property purchase price or valuation, whichever is lower. In the first example, we look at the case of a HDB flat purchase. If the purchase price is $550,000 and the valuation is $500,000, assuming the buyer took a HDB loan and he manages to secure up to 90% loan. This 90% will be based on valuation or purchase price, whichever is lower. In this case, it will be based on $500,000. If we assume this buyer is using CPF to cover the other 10% of the purchase, this means the purchaser will need to pay the shortfall of $50,000 by cash since it is neither covered by loan or CPF. We call this cash overvaluation. Various government bodies often use valuation too. For example, when a purchaser purchases a property in Singapore, he will need to pay by a stamp duty. IRAS charges stamp duty on purchase price or market value, whichever is higher. IRAS also utilizes valuation methods to derive at property tax. In Singapore, property tax is calculated by estimating the gross annual rent of the property and multiplying this annual value by the relevant tax rates. The annual value is derived using the above valuation methods we mentioned at the discretion of the chief assessor of IRAS. If your property is acquired for compulsory acquisition under the Land Acquisition Act in Singapore, the amount of compensation payable to the affected owners are derived using valuation. This is determined by Singapore Land Authority in conjunction with IRAS. Valuation also affects the cost of development and indirectly launch prices of new homes. In Singapore, Property developers pay development charge on top of land price as a form of taxation for the rights to enhance the use and intensity of some land. This development charge is based on prevailing development charge rates, 
which are updated every 1st of March and September of the year. The development charge rates are based on IRAS assessments of land value by taking into consideration recent sales. They are done using various methods of valuation. Often, when you see an increase in DC rates, this gets cost into the final launch prices of the new homes. This pretty much wraps up the basis of valuation and more importantly, how valuation impacts everyone, including homeowners and potential buyers. See you in our next chapter.